everyone, thank you for joining us for our regular scheduled content right here on the GUE YouTube channel. Regular watchers know me, my name is Nico Liro, and I'm here today to talk about this, the Paralens Vikita underwater camera. I'd like to, of course, thank the good people over at Paralens for sending this over for me to test out. I'd also like to add that as an avid underwater photographer and videographer, I am going to go into quite a bit of detail on this interesting bit of hardware. Talk about my first-hand experience with the camera, what I liked, disliked, what you can expect from it. So please do like the video, share the video, tickle that notification bell as we take a deep dive, pun intended, into the Paralens Vikita. Let's get the numbers and details out the way to begin with, as these specs are going to be a big part of whether you even show interest in this camera. The camera itself shoots at 12 megapixels for photos, up to 4K at 60 frames per second in video with an H.264 bitrate, which if you shoot and edit video, you will appreciate how good the quality is going to supposedly be. It has an 18 millimeter focal length and a 108 degree field of view. A quick side note, if some of these stats are a bit confusing to you, I do invite you to check out my Creative Imagery for Diver series on GUE TV, where we go into great detail about these sort of specs. Getting back to the camera though, the display is a true OLED display, which, while small, gives you a crystal clear view underwater. The body is made of an aluminium alloy rated to as deep as, wait for it, 350 meters with no housing needed. You can literally charge the camera and go diving to that depth. So for all you deep aficionados, this camera should definitely be piquing your interest at this point. It has a Sony image sensor and is ultra sensitive to light, enabling it to handle extreme depths with moderate ease. The LiPo battery has a three hour runtime and is easily charged via USB-C cable. Just plug directly into the camera, no need for taking the battery out. Super simple. In all honesty, when it comes to the camera specs, one can only admire what Paralens has done. It's a seriously impressive little camera and it gets a massive thumbs up from me in the specs department. The Vikita has a number of easy to operate settings from the snap mode, which allows you to simultaneously record or take photos, depending on how long you hold the trigger down. It has a dedicated video mode, two custom modes, a dive log mode, and a location finder. But it's when we go into the settings that the camera pleasantly surprised me. From here, you can turn the depth controlled colors, which I'll go into in detail a little bit later on, Set up your custom modes how you want, but it's when we look at the manual mode in the advanced settings that we see how much thought has gone into this camera. If you wish to, you can white balance manually. You can set your exposure manually controlling both shutter speed and ISO. And for those who watch my creative imagery for divers series, you'll know that this is damn impressive for a camera this size. Especially when you consider the shutter speed range is from 1 30th of a second all the way up to 1 8,000th of a second and an ISO range from 100 to 6400. For context, that's as much as some top-end DSLR cameras like this Canon 1300D. So let's be clear, under its little hood, the Vikita is packing some serious power but you can have all the best specs and settings in the world. How does the camera actually handle? So I was lucky enough to test the Vikita out in crystal clear Mediterranean waters in Croatia, where we had about 20 meters of viz, and likewise murky green waters right here in the UK, where I got about five, seven meters of viz at best. The Vikita operates with a control ring and single button command. When you turn the control ring, it cycles through the various modes I mentioned before. And within that mode, you simply pull or hold, depending on the mode, to activate said mode. Let me start out with the positives, because there are a few. Keeping it simple, the selector ring and trigger, shutter, 
trigger shutter, depends how you want to look at it. So the trigger shutter on the Vaquita worked beautifully underwater. They weren't affected at all by the changes in water pressure or temperature. Something that can't be said for a number of other cameras and housings, such as the GoPro's housing. The OLED delivered on its promise of being easy to read, the camera was well balanced and therefore easy to shoot with. Now in Croatia, there really wasn't much to see. <laughs> okay, let me rewind that. Don't take this as a certified review or something of diving in Croatia. I only did a few local dives there, so my existing opinion is not the most informed and I probably wasn't in the best place to dive anyway. But given the lack of things to see, this gave me the chance to play around a little with some of the camera's settings. I played around filming with the depth control colors or DCC function as it's known. I tried it on versus off to start with. Let me take this moment to say that this was the part of the camera I was most skeptical about. How could something so gimmicky replace a good old fashioned filter or lights? I can honestly say it does, and it does so brilliantly. This is not a gimmick, it's an amazing function that frankly puts competitors like GoPro and the DJI Osmo action cams, which require a bunch of additional accessories, to shame. So the DCC was a revelation. Then I started to play with the other functions and this is where my experience was a bit more negative. The Vaquita is almost a victim of its own cleverness, sadly. It's amazing that it gives you the manual functions I described before, but due to the single button functionality of the camera, the time it takes to navigate the menus and submenus to reach things like ISO and shutter speed is frankly frustrating. This is definitely a serious limitation for the camera because one of the Vaquita's primary missions is to capture wildlife to aid scientists around the world. And we'll talk about, talk more about that in a bit. We're not talking a few seconds to navigate the menus. We're talking close to a minute or more to get into the manual mode and set your exposure up manually. Now for a camera that's meant to capture wildlife as a primary mission, sorry, that's just not good enough. Wildlife doesn't just stick around to strike a pose. I'm not a design expert when it comes to cameras, but surely it would make more sense to have a dedicated manual mode on the selection ring. Maybe something like the good people at Paralens could consider for a future model. But for the existing model, I would suggest not burying the manual mode under so many menu layers. That's something that I think could easily be fixed with a firmware update. And something I really want to see, because at the moment, it's too long-winded to get into manual mode. Now, given the lack of stuff to see where I was in Croatia, it's just what I do. I turn my attention to searching for some... Macro life. There were a few gobies and nudibranchs, but the Vaquita, this is again a bit of a frustration, the Vaquita lens really couldn't handle these very well. I tried something a bit bigger, a sea urchin. And again, the Vaquita couldn't handle the finer details. Once again, given that a huge mission of the company is to capture marine life, I'll be honest, I was really surprised to discover that capturing anything even remotely small was an impossibility. I know for a fact that there are lenses that adjust between macro and wide angle based on distance to the subject. So it would be really nice to see some of the, some lens ingenuity on future models. In short, I left Croatia mildly frustrated by the camera because in summary, it was too long to switch between manual settings and the camera had a clear inability to capture smaller subjects. Not great. However, in the UK, the camera came into its own. Based on what I experienced in Croatia, I decided to stay off manual mode. I went on the DCC function just to see how it handles in murky green water and just focus on some larger subjects. When used in this capacity, the Vaquita was fantastic. I invite everyone to have a look at our UK dive vlog, link above, where all the underwater footage was shot with the Vaquita. But in short, I was filming grey fur seals and the footage was 
seriously impressive. The green murky water, while not perfectly blue, certainly was drastically improved by the DCC. With a little bit of colour grading, the results are great. So all in all, if you use the Vaquita as it is arguably meant to be used, snap mode, DCC on, filming larger subjects, it's one impressive bit of hardware. So good that it will certainly factor into my camera equipment packing when I travel in the future. Call me obsessive, but I am still mildly annoyed that there is so much manual power in this camera, but it's so frustrating to access it. If you have a very patient buddy and you're manually setting your exposure for something like a wreck, then great, unleash the power. Anything wildlife related though, forget it. The animals will be gone before you even have a chance to enter the manual mode, such as the slow speed of having to navigate through the menus. Last bit to discuss is the camera's accessories, which are sold separately. A bit like the camera itself, it's somewhat of a mixed bag of positives and negatives. First of all, I would like to give two massive thumbs up to Paralens for actually making a lens cover. The amount of cameras and housings I have tested over the years which didn't have lens covers is frankly embarrassing and it's really nice to see a company which has remembered that lens covers are so important and necessary. There is quite a wide selection of accessories from spare parts and magnetic rings. Third person viewfinders with floats, mask mounts, ball mounts to attach the paralens to your larger camera rig if you have one, and the Vaquita grip. This is essentially a trigger for the camera. You hold the trigger like you would with a gun. I imagine, I've never held a gun, but it makes capturing video and photos that much easier. So, a great accessory, until you decide to try and take it off. The video I'm sharing here is from Paralens's official YouTube channel, and as you can see, you forcibly have to pry the grip off. There's no quick release system, you literally have to forcibly remove it. Not great. Even worse, considering it's made of cheap plastic, it was very I, sorry, it was, I was very concerned of basically snapping the grip. Why they couldn't make this accessory with a quick release system, frankly, is beyond me. It's a great idea, but a bad design. One shouldn't have to use a random screwdriver to, fo to force off a camera accessory, ever. One last point of frustration was with the maintenance. What's great with the Vaquita is that it has so many O-rings, so you really do feel like your camera is well protected inside. However, when it comes to changing said O-rings, it's not only fiddly as everything is so small, Paralens recommends using only wooden tools to remove the O-rings, but then they don't include any wooden tools. This video again is an official Paralens video where you can see a wooden tool of some sort being used. It's a minor thing, because we could always use a toothpick, maybe, but it's something I feel should be included with the maintenance kit. As well as having a damn good YouTube channel with demonstration videos on how the camera works, which I commend them for, Paralens also has a dedicated app, which you can wirelessly share your footage with, and this is where GPS location depth, etc. are recorded. Paralens claims that every dive you share helps scientists save our oceans. If people do use the app, I can believe that this mission of helping scientists could be enabled. The app is really user-friendly and even has a basic video editor, so you can have fun with that if programs like Final Cut or Premiere Pro intimidate you. Again though, coming back to the point I made earlier, if one of the mission objectives of the camera is to help scientists record data, why does the camera not have the ability to capture smaller subjects? So all in all, do I recommend the Vaquita? Should you invest in it for maybe a treat for yourself or maybe a Christmas present? As you probably gathered from the review, it's a mixed bag. If you are prepared to focus on the camera's quick record abilities and leave the DCC turned on, 
I can honestly say you will be impressed with how good the Vikita is. A beautiful OLED display, image stabilization, 4K video at 60 frames a second, no need for a housing and an impressive depth range, 350 meters remember. If all of that's important to you, yes, 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 I can definitely recommend it. If you want to focus on the camera's advanced features, I'm sorry to say you're going to be frustrated. There's no two ways about it. I do believe that this frustration can be partially fixed with a firmware update, so all the manual settings are not buried under so many menus and submenus. Hopefully Paralens will deliver on this in the future. So, I hope you enjoyed this detailed review of the Paralens Vikita. Now that you are done here, why not check out our UK dive vlog, which is in the link below in the description, where you can see more of the Vikita in action. Please be sure to like the video, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time right here on Global Underwater Explorers. See ya!